So I, uh, I've got this gnarly job here. This corner piece has been welded in now. I still need to grind down this weld here and a little bit of stuff underneath. And that edge has been taken care of. This is pretty, it's pretty gnarly and I'm not real proud of it, but it'll be okay. I'll get over it. Now, having said that, I, if you recall, initially I had uh, removed this thin piece of sheet metal that had been spot welded along the top of here. And I drilled out the spot welds and I, unfortunately, I dug in uh, here and you can see the holes where I dug in with my drill bit. So I thought to myself, well, I, you know what, I just can't live with myself. So I'm going to go ahead and cut each of these out and put new metal in there. I could have done it a, a different way probably, but oh well, is what it is. One of my viewers suggested that I get rid of that stupid thing, which is a plain old fashioned uh, welding helmet. And I went today and picked up an auto darkening helmet. Wow, what a difference it made. It made things so much easier. So we have this little little nonsense right here, right? You can see where the welds are left behind. And this is where I had covered up one of these little holes. Well, not covered up, but I cut it out and put a patch in there, right? Now, this is one where I had my regular old-fashioned welding helmet. And this next one is where I had my auto darkening helmet. I think you can tell that, you know, that looks a lot better. I, it just, everything was just so much easier. I'm not a professional welder. I admit it. Okay, you know sue me here uh, but you know what by golly it's on there it'll stay there what I'm going to do is take my little air powered uh, reciprocating saw and just cut a little square right there right and then I'll take my uh, my metal shears and we'll cut a little piece off our sheet metal stock over there we'll fill it in and we'll weld it in I've got several several of these to do so let's get busy All right, it's not rocket science, but it does work. Now we're gonna clean that up some. All right, so we've got a nice little uh, notch cut out of our little frame rail right there. So uh, up next, I'm gonna go cut a little piece of uh, sheet metal to fill that in. All right, so I've got my uh, metal shears out there, my tin snips, and I'm simply going to eyeball this. And we'll eventually come to a shape that will work. We're almost there. All right, I think we've got it. Now, obviously it overhangs here, but I'm gonna leave this overhang in place because if you, if you cut it off flush uh, and then try to weld it, it's just gonna have a dip in there and I'll show you. It just won't work. So we're gonna weld it up and then, we'll and then we'll cut the excess off. Now we're gonna start with some, uh, with just some tape here. I'd prefer not to use magnets. It just doesn't work out very well. It makes the welding ugly, especially since I'm not a professional welder. So we'll just do it like this. All right, we just need a little piece to weld to, and then we can take all that stuff off of there. All right, we got it on there. We're ready to uh, tack it in place.
All right, now we're just gonna lop off the excess with the reciprocating saw. I might have enough to make another patch out of that. All right, so the next step here is just to grind these welds down and then move on to the next one. So that's the basic process I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the camera off and I'm gonna fill in all the rest of these holes and then after that, I think we have to uh, put this little patch in here. I've got to make a little patch to fill this little gap in right here. Uh, and then we're going to move on and clean up this area right in here, right in this curve. So, all right, well, let's get back to work. We'll see you shortly. All right, so we've been um, going along here. I've filled in three here, and I've done four more here. Only got about 500 PSI in my... Uh, carbon dioxide argon tank over there. So I think I'm gonna hold off on this for right now. Just worried about running out of gas this weekend. But uh, red beans and rice ought to cure that later. Anyway, so I was, I was looking at this, I'm like, why does this look not correct? It just doesn't look right. Well, the reason why, piece of metal here, it ramps up at the end. I was like, what is going on? So and I forgot that this is two layers, okay? There's a layer under here you cannot see, and there's the top layer on which the trim and the window rests, okay? This piece is the bottom layer, and it's supposed to fall in line with this piece under here. Well, I've got this thing ramped up and welded to this top layer. So it's a mistake, so no worries, we'll fix it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut here and we're gonna, you know, get the gentle persuader out, a couple other things, and force that guy downward some so that it will be at the level of this bottom. There'll be a gap in between these two pieces, between this piece and the one under here. It's not gonna matter. At least it won't in my mind. <laughs> but uh, there will be another thin strip that will be spot welded over the top of this before we put the final uh, trim plate over the top. So you'll have the trim plate, another thin strip in the middle, and then this. So it'll be three layers, okay? Uh, which is the way it was when I took it apart. Although the middle layer was completely rusted and destroyed. Uh, so up next, I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, little saw out. I'm going to trim this guy off here. We're going to beat this into submission, and then we'll move on with our little patch that we have to make here. I hate cutting into something I've already done, but sometimes you have to do it. Man, that weld was pretty hard. All right, so we've got our cut made. See that you could tell right here, from here to here, it's ramped up kind of like. All right, let's get the uh, persuasion tool. Yeah, that's not so hard. Okay, I'm glad I did that. That that looks. Boom, pow, fixed. I know it doesn't look fixed, but it is, it's proper. So we've got our cut, we've got this, which is down to the layer of the bottom piece underneath there, and then we'll come in here, and we, when we lay this piece over the top and spot weld it, we'll butt weld it against that. So boom, fixed. All right, so up next, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, no you're not. I just realized something. See, I'm doing this on the fly, guys. <laughs> All right, so this piece, I cannot make this piece parallelogram. We talked about this earlier. Parallel, parallelogram shapes? Anyway, so it's going to go here, and I'm, it's going to tick up here and be welded here, right? So I'm going to have to put this piece in place and then weld our little patch to it. I can't weld the patch to that, if you get my meaning. So... Right now, we're, we've taken this as far as we can. So I have to get back to what I was doing. I'm going to have to finish these up so that I can lay in that extra piece of steel over the top. So I guess, I guess we're back to this now. So a little change in direction. I'm not going to get diverted off into this just yet. I'm going to save that for later. We're going to fully address this top part first and then we'll move on. We're not gonna get sidetracked. We're gonna do one thing at a time, and that 
first thing is going to be finishing this top piece. And once we're done with that, then we'll move on and address anything down here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on and fill in the rest of these holes. So we'll be back in just a little bit. Shh. Do you hear it? It's the native cry of the leaf blower. But let's move on. That is the leaf blowingest guy I have ever known in my life. It's like if one leaf gets on the concrete, it's got to go. So here we are. Uh, we've got uh, these four and I've uh, moved on down the line here. Move my ground out of the way. We've done one, two, three, four, five. And I got two more to go here. So we're gonna finish up welding up these holes that this guy made. All right, you know what? I think I'm gonna take a little break and just show you what I'm using here. I picked up this little MIG welder back in, I think it was 2003, when I was doing restoration work on an old 66 four-door hardtop Impala, right? So this is a Lincoln Electric Weld Pack 100. Now this came as simply a wire-fed welder. It didn't come as a MIG. However, it did come with the provision to upgrade it to MIG and you had to buy a little kit to upgrade. So this was like the bottom of the line welder from Lincoln Electric, but hey, it's, it's pretty nice. So this thing is nearly 20 years old. There's the inside, it's got a nice uh, chart on the inside. It shows you all your different thicknesses and how to set your knobs on the front based on the kind of welding gases you're using. Shows you how to feed your wire in and all that kind of stuff. And then here's, here's where you set your wire feed pressure and there's your reel of wire. Pretty simple really, but it's just, it's just very reliable. Bought the little cart separately, picked up the three foot bottle of gas, I believe from air gas is the last time I got it refilled. I've had that thing refilled a dozen time, times over the years. Uh, the initial cost on the bottle is kind of steep, but after that the refills are very reasonable. On the front end, of the Weld Pack 100, the nasty Weld Pack 100. You're gonna set your power level. Basically, this is your current. I've got it set on, I'm doing real thin sheet metal, so I got it set on A, which is the lowest power. Goes up to D. I don't, I don't know what that current is analogous to, to be honest with you. And then this is your the speed of your wire. So this is a, sort of a delicate balance. If you get your wire speed too high, your wire will poke through the weld and that'll ruin your day. If you get it too low, the, uh, the wire will burn off and it won't touch the weld pool. So you need to, for, for 20 gauge sheet metal, right at two and a half, maybe 2.75 is optimal for what we're doing here. So, and this is a 120 volt welder. So if you're thinking about getting a welder, there's plenty on the market nowadays. You know, you know back in the day, Miller and Lincoln had the market wrapped up, but man, you can go down to Harbor Freight and buy, any kind of welder you want, even plasma cutters for, you know, just a few hundred bucks. I think I gave 300 bucks for that one back in 03. All right, folks, that's all for the little Lincoln Electric Model 100 MIG welder. All right, we made uh, some pretty good uh, headway here. Uh, I'm not done with this top area yet, but I think I've done about all I'm gonna do for one day. Uh, I was able to fill in all of the uh, holes that needed filling in. These last two down here weren't too bad. So what I did was I just put some sheet metal on the back side of it and held it up with a uh, vice grip and just plug welded it in there. And I think after I grind that down, it'll look pretty good. We went ahead and patched these other holes and I've got the uh, tops lopped off of them with the little reciprocating saw. I still need to grind down the welds here. I, I just finished grinding this one down and polishing it up a little bit. And I still got four to do down there. That is probably about an hour's worth of work, maybe an hour and a half, I'm not sure. I think I'm done for the weekend. Uh, so I, I believe we made fairly good progress. Spent a lot of my time troubleshooting on that W210 uh, this weekend. So my brain power is, uh, I think, shot for, for the weekend, so. And oh, by the way, this, this thing down here, this piece of metal right here, that's basically just a humongous razor blade. So I, uh, 
I discovered that earlier today. I just slit my knuckle wide open. Didn't go to the bone or anything. It's just, you know what? If you're working around sharp sheet metal, folks, hey, you know what? Just be careful. Wear some gloves, dummy. All right, folks, that's about it for uh, this weekend's restoration work on the old 300 SD here. We're still working on this top layer and we're gonna fill in all these wells, trim them down, get it polished up. And then we're gonna cut a new piece of sheet metal and we're going to, you know, I got half a mind to run downtown and pick up one of those cheap spot welders and put that on there instead of doing a plug weld with the old MIG welder. But uh, I'll give that some thought before I make that decision. All right, folks, so that's gonna do it for this weekend. Appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You know where it is. You guys have a good one. And remember to enjoy restoring your classic Mercedes.